Well, yes, NDA had proposed easing liquor restrictions in the state of Andhra Pradesh and now that NDA has won state elections in the state of Andhra Pradesh, city believes that favorable regulations could come in for the alcohol beverage industry and that could positively play, uh, benefit players the likes of United Spirits, United Breweries, etc. They also say that Andhra Pradesh market contributes about 5-6% to 6 of UBL and USL's uh, total revenue mix and they believe that regulatory changes could favorably uh, benefit these players. Remember Andhra Pradesh earlier had imposed restrictions on liquor sales in terms of the number of outlets and retail sales of liquor and now perhaps city believes that the changing uh, government in the state of Andhra Pradesh could positively benefit the industry. While okay, we do have a lot of changes uh, that are happening in overall when you talk about because of the elections, the changes that one could see in the policy side as well. And that's what we're going to be talking about right now for the FMCG pack and what is happening on that front. Also, we have uh, Snehi as well as Sharad and uh, Anisha obviously will be here to talk and we'll talk about the different uh, sectors and what, you know, these policy changes actually affect them and how. So let me start then firstly uh, with the FMCG side that we we'll talk about and when you talk about the FMCG pack currently uh, given the change that we'll see in the government seems like what analysts believe that they would be seeing more of a focus that could come in on the rural push. Let's not forget FMCG has been that uh, underperformer in the last one year so yes there is a room for them to run up. We had a note that came in from Jeffries where they were bullish and positive on HUL and they win a target price of 2,950 rupees per share. Other than that, we did have a note today that came in from City, uh, which also spoke about how they are also, for them also, HUL is among the top bet. Other than that, they have GCPL, Britannia, Hunasa consumers is what they like and they believe that these listed players could actually start seeing some market share gains. So other than that, Goldman Sachs also positive on the consumer staple uh, segment and sector. Overall, they've uh, moved the an upgraded consumer staple from an underweight to a neutral rating. Uh, Jeffrey's too overweight on consumer staple and similarly for CLSA, ITC is quite positive and that's what they like. So good monsoons, lot of factors coming in, the government push, rural policy, Anisha, these are the factors that will work out, you know, the, for the FMCG pack and that's why we've seen a run up in these stocks. Well, yes, so Jeffries has come out with a note on housing finance companies wherein they say that the Modi government may announce the much-awaited revamped affordable housing scheme. Now, industry players that we've been interacting with also are all hoping that a revamped version of the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana or PMAY is brought back. And if this happens, affordable housing finance companies like Home First Finance and Awas Financiers stand to be the direct beneficiaries. Mid-ticket uh, segment players like LIC Housing Finance and Canfin Homes could also see some tailwinds coming from this scheme. But when it comes to Jefferies, they prefer Awas Financiers and Home First among affordable housing finance companies and Canfin Home amongst the housing finance companies. Well, as the infra space is in focus, CLSA has come out with its reports on the CapEx front and an ambitious 100-day plan is expected to come out under the Modi 3.0 government, which will hit the ground running with large orders coming in. Now, interestingly, the, bro the broking has stated that the large orders are expected to come in the domains of infra as well as defense. Asset monetization will also be one of the key things to watch out for. And interestingly, demands from BJP's allies in two states, the first one being Andhra Pradesh and the second being BR. In that case, the state-level CapEx will also expected to pick up especially in the infra space. Now the key topics from CLSA for infra space includes LNT, IRB, NCC and JK1 Infra. Well, yes, the implication of the recent election verdict would be on the city gas distribution companies as well. And that is the note coming in from City, where they are highlighting that a significant development could benefit the entire gas value chain. It's bringing uh, the gas under the purview of GST. And that could be a big positive trigger for all the city gas distribution companies, as well as Gale is what they are highlighting. Because they are saying that the new government could have majority in the GST council. And given NDA's focus on enhancing the usage of the gas in the economy... Uh, that could benefit all of these companies, though the timeline of that is still uncertain. But when it goes through, it could be seen as a positive trigger. Now, City retains their constructive view on the Indian gas, wherein stocks like Gale, IGL, as well as MGL remain their preferred picks. For the consolidation in the City gas distribution sector is likely to continue. But the large players out there from the likes of MGL and IGL are on their list, where they are saying that they prefer these companies because though they can benefit from the uh, tax uh, changes, but other than that, the 
higher volumes and conversions could help them. But on Gale, they are saying that this could be another beneficiary because there's a potential 3% earnings benefit through the tax saving on the captive gas consumption plus indirect benefit through the increased gas usage in the economy. So on the back of that, all of these companies are in focus.